We are live, Portfolio Builder members. We've heard this before. Whatever you do, don't call it QE, but we can see the monetary base is going up. It's causing stocks to drive to all-time new highs. And we have an asset class that has actually pulled back to start the year off, which makes zero sense with all the, the good news coming through. Uh, and we'll probably be where we start adding some exposure next week with some new trade alerts. Uh, but for now, this week, we are staying flat. Last year, we had a total return of 131%. We traded the portfolio maybe four total times. Very passive strategy. Buy these stocks now for big money in 2024. Click the link below now for a free trial and phone consultation. Plus, every week, you'll get the daily trade alert uh, update. So again, we are expecting a trade alert next week. And you're going to want to get that by signing up below. High risk portfolio allocation. Currently, every investor following the program has a unit of investment costing $6,124. You can see that up top. Our paid members can punch in how much money they want to invest. Hit calculate, it prints out exactly what to do. On the defensive side of the portfolio per unit, we have 15 shares of UVXY, which is down to 1.78% of the portfolio. Pretty light. We'll probably add to that uh, in the coming weeks. Our treasury position's been getting beat up this year, 25 shares, now worth 22% of the portfolio. We love this position. Uh, over the next two to five years, we think it's going to reach uh, maybe not as high as we had in the lockdowns of 2020, uh, but it could get back towards those levels. So great long-term hold there on the defensive side, betting on deflation, slowing economy, uh, and falling interest rates. Then on the offensive side, we have COIN, which fell from 180 to 124. Fundamentals of COIN are getting absolutely ridiculous. We see this going towards 300 to 500 over the next several years. No plans to sell it. Uh, by far our favorite stock market pick in this sector. Uh, and again, that's 16 shares per unit of investment. We have two shares of NRGU. So oil's been going nowhere, despite all the escalations in Europe and Middle East. Uh, as the economy starts to heat back up, the monetary policy eases. Uh, we got Japan, China, Europe all ready to cut rates or print money. U.S. is getting ready to cut rates. Uh, we expect oil to go back up. So quite possible we could add to that position. I'm ready to add boil back with a small position next week. So that'll be one of the new trade alerts most likely coming in. GBTC at 30 shares, 17.44%. We'll most likely rotate this either into ETHE uh, or into some of the miners. So we'll look at some opportunities there. Uh, FNGU breaking to new highs, uh, or at least the NASDAQ is today. Uh, there's a few weeks of earnings coming out. Uh, so at some point, we'll probably trim that down. And again, the correlation between the NASDAQ and coin just broke. The catch-up trade is in coin and GBTC. Uh, so we'll want to fade that F and G U trade soon, but not yet. It is printing all the profits for us today. Uh, again, we had a little bit of a pullback to start off the year after a 131% return last year. Total return with two ridiculous months in November, 26.86%, then 23.2%. Um, just note, we I had you sit flat for three months losing money before you knocked it out of the ballpark. So don't worry about the little drawdown we have uh, this month. Every asset we're in long-term, I would have 100% conviction. You could never look at it again, and it will go up in the next two years. Uh, but again, we'll make some small changes in the next few weeks. Click the link below now for a free trial and phone consultation if you're seeing this on YouTube. If you're live on the webinar, that means you're a member. And don't need to worry about doing that. And again, if you do take a free trial, you'll be invited to the live webinars where you can ask questions. Want to learn more? Call Dean now at 505-322-7515. Safe Growth Portfolio currently has a allocation of $2,102 per unit. All members follow the same ratio of shares per unit. And again, if you're a member or on a trial, tell us how much to invest. Punch it into the calculator. It prints out the ratios for you. On the defensive side, it's really low with two shares of UVXY. Uh, again, we'll probably top that up in a few weeks. Uh, it has 11 shares of TMF. That's betting on the long end of Treasuries. Interest rates falling 28%. Uh, this one's got a lot of value play. So it's got TMF, which has been in a two-year bear market, starting to show some signs of life in the last three months. 
Uh, it's got shares of emerging markets, which has been in a two-year bear market. Um, and again, China just announced that they are going to do a $228 billion stock market recovery fund, uh, which has been making Asian stocks go up, especially tech stocks, uh, which EDC is EEM times three. And again, that's got a lot of countries, not just China. You get your exposure to India uh, and all the little countries around that area. So it's a huge ETF with something like 4,000 stocks in it, leverage times three. Again, the safe growth portfolio is looking for value investments. Uh, they're underpriced, while the high-risk portfolio is often chasing momentum. Um, and so again, you gotta be ready for a lot more volatility when you're playing momentum uh, versus value. This portfolio has a huge GBTC position, uh, quite likely will sit there, may split it in half with ETHE or add coin since it's at a value relative to that 180 price. Uh, and then it's got a, a decent NRGU play. Um, so it may not need boil. And again, boil can be very hard to play. We've made a lot of money last few years in the high risk portfolio with boil, uh, but we've also been burnt by it. So uh, we'll see exactly what trades come out next week, but that's what we're thinking. This portfolio had a 14.68% return 2023, uh, down 7% to start this year. Uh, and again, that's because we had oil and treasuries and GBTC fall, uh, which makes no sense uh, with the fundamentals we're looking at. Uh, so again, don't worry about it. No changes uh, of significance to that portfolio. Uh, and you'd walk away with giant returns the next two years. Central bank rate hikes versus cuts. Okay, so we are in rate cut cycle or pause cycle, and it's about to get much, much easier. Something like 60% of countries globally have voting this year. So politicians are gonna be pressuring central bankers to make markets pump to get voters happy, those that are in power. There's also gonna be a lot of pressure to ease these wars in the Middle East, which are really on the verge of messing up uh, inflation. Uh, so very interesting, but that's the big picture. And again, two thirds of, I think the entire world will be voting this year. So a lot of potential change happening in politics uh, to be following this year. And that happens to be one of my favorite things to, to follow on the macro side. Okay, this is why we're confident of a strong stock market, uh, even though we're seeing a lot of the price data fall in terms of inflation. That's because the US is running a debt to GDP uh, that is unheard of, and they have no plans to change it, whether it is Mr. T or Mr. B. And again, Google's now restricting what we say again, of course, uh, but either of the two people running uh, will run massive deficits. So this is very good for stocks, not as good for bonds. Um, but again, primarily where we're invested uh, is a bet on the monetary expansion of capital. Here's a look at the inflation data. We did have it pop back up a little bit last uh, a week or two ago, uh, but in general, the trend is down and we're highly confident will continue down primarily because shelter uh, is about 18 months behind, and that's gone all the way back to flat towards zero. So that alone is quite likely going to drive inflation dramatically lower. Uh, we also have the dollar index hitting the death cross, um, uh, which essentially means that the U.S. dollar is quite likely going to not go back above that 103 level, which is very good for uh, your GBTC FNGU positions. Okay, so this is a look at one of our favorite plays for the next two years. And uh, again, we can't say the name of this because of, of Google, uh, but you can read the screen. You can see it's the best performing asset since 2013 outside of the years that it didn't perform. And in those years, it was the worst performing asset. Uh, so again, we're expecting it to be the best performer uh, for the next two years. And the main, uh, the main catalyst is the ETF is raking in billions of dollars into this asset every two days. Uh, the cost to create BTC is about to double. They call this the having event. And this has typically marked uh, where the asset class melts up for about a year to two years. So we're really at that point in time right now. We're getting very excited. Uh, so we have inflation falling. We have interest rates likely to fall. We have massive money being pushed to governments. 
uh, politically for uh, elections. And then we also have, um, again, the halving coming up. Uh, now here's what happened when the first gold ETF was listed. You can see it sent gold into this parabolic move up uh, from 2004 all the way to a peak of 2000, uh, late 11. So about seven years of just straight up. Had a nice pullback and now we're getting ready to send gold to new highs right now. Okay, so the main thing we're worried about on the central bank side and monetary policy side, which probably could be overlay, overlooked for the next year due to, again, politics, uh, is the freight cost is skyrocketing. It's about 18 weeks in advance that freight costs begin to impact uh, the Fed's favorite inflation metric, which they call PCE. So again, if they don't get the uh, issues in these two ports and Cs uh, dealt with soon, uh, that could start to make the inflation come back up. And perhaps it won't happen in 2024, but 2025, all of a sudden you get central banks shocking the world again by having to uh, hike interest rates back up. So that's a risk factor we're watching carefully. And here's a better look at freight rates pushed five months forward. So for now, uh, I won't really start peaking up until mid-2024. And another look at container ship rates just skyrocketing up. If you like the content you've seen so far, click the link below for a free trial and phone consultation. We'll give you a free trade alert, make, let you make money with the program before you subscribe. Call Dean now to learn more at 505-322-7515. Okay, so a lot of people like to look at the 10-year, two-year treasury uh, spread to determine if you're heading into a recession. And typically, if you look at this chart, uh, what happens is the front end of the yield curve drops towards zero, and then the long end, well, it's still probably going lower, uh, doesn't fall as quickly. And that's what's gonna pred predict a short-term uh, recession and stock market crash. So long-term, they think the inflation will continue and there'll be things done to fix it, but in the short-term, they think inflation is going to zero, stocks are gonna go to zero, and so all of a sudden, uh, just securing your capital and any interest rate becomes attractive. So you get this spiking spread. And so uh, we're on alert for that. But again, we're, we're still in negative territory. So the front end is still more expensive, the long end. Uh, so that call for a recession is really far off currently. Here's a look at your two year. Uh, really just bounced between four and five over the last year. <laughs> Here's TMF. This is the long end of the bond market that we believe will head towards 0% rates over the next five to 10 years. It's the only way the government keeps spending these massive amounts of money. Every economy globally has a situation uh, where they didn't have enough kids to support everyone going into retirement. Um, so all of the uh, healthcare, social security, all of this is gonna have to be paid for by printing money. Um, and the only way they can keep borrowing massive amounts of money is driving interest rates lower because no one wants to lend money if they're losing money. Uh, by interest rates rising. So TMF is one of my favorite long-term plays. And again, it's just been getting beat up from a high of about 100 of April last year uh, down to 54 currently. And again, this is after uh, a two-year bear market. This is the longest bond market, bear market uh, in quite some time. There's, there's some in the 70s and 80s that were uh, similar, but again, we were hiking interest rates to almost 20% with Paul Volcker back then. In one month, uh, you can see it's fallen from 68 to 54, and everything's valued against uh, interest rates on bonds. So this is not very good news in general. Uh, but the reason for it is, again, the massive fiscal deficit being pushed through the economy is keeping stocks earnings red hot. Okay, here's your DXY. Uh, we believe that essentially Japan, Europe, China uh, are predicting the U.S. will soon ease interest rates, and that's going to make the dollar index fall. So they're front running that, and they're easing before we do. So that's why you got the dollar index staying flat right now. What's likely to happen is they will make their easing first, and then pause, and then the U.S. will come in with its easing next, and then watch for that dollar to drop. Once that dollar drops, Assets like GBTC are going to skyrocket up uh, in U.S. dollar terms. And again, you can see the dollar just trading flat over the last year, uh, bouncing between 100 and 105. Here's your yield curve broken down. 
uh, from three months to 30 year. And again, you can see the highest interest rates are at the top, lowest interest rates are at the bottom. That's the exact opposite of a recession. That's a economy that's too hot. And here's what that yield curve looks like uh, on, on this dot plot chart. Again, you can see this is the exact opposite of predicting a recession by the bond market. Here's your 30 year. You can see uh, since, since uh, the eighties really, uh, this has been falling from 10% down towards, uh, I think as low as two, we've bounced back up to 4.39. I expect this to break to new lows over the next decade. And TMF is how you get ultra rich from that very easy to predict outcome. And again, we've already seen Japan and Europe drive rates to, uh, below zero, much less to zero. So it's very possible. And again, it's the only way we're going to be able to finance uh, Social Security, Medicare, uh, and really the entire U.S. budget over the next several decades. Uh, it's either that or completely balance the budget, crash the stock market, have massive layoffs, and go into either a recession or depression. I, I just don't see any politicians uh, selling that, uh, nor any voters going for it. Here's F and G just going parabolic here, uh, likely in the next few weeks, we'll take some profits, if not all of it off of that. Yen is the catch-up trade for China's tech times three. So that looks attractive and more of a value play. And again, we've seen Yen outperforming F&G over the last two days, ever since that news came out. The only catch is that the US is blocking technology, especially AI chips to China. So it's unclear how they're going to compete uh, in the same ways that our big companies are dominating, which is in AI. Now, they do have some good tech companies, uh, but they're primarily software orientated, not uh, using AI chips. Coinbase, killer sell off to buy the dip. Uh, again, we see this going towards three to 500 over several years. They're the custodian for the new ETFs, and they have a complete monopoly in US uh, centralized exchanges. Uh, GBTC's had a sell off, which makes no sense. We basically have FTX, Celsius, a few. Uh, companies that went bankrupt uh, have been racing with each other to sell uh, into the rally as hard as they could. And they created forced liquidations and long leverage positions. Uh, so again, we see this as a killer buy the dip uh, position and catch up trade to what you're seeing in the NASDAQ or FNGO. EDC, uh, again, had a little bit of a fun time earlier last year and then the inflation came back and now it's starting to uh, basically, this is a bet that interest rates will fall and the dollar will fall. So it's very correlated to something like GBTC, uh, just a good way to get uh, different diversification. And then again, exposure to Asia. And we're starting to see money flow back to Asia from the West. So that's our play with EDC and its chart. Here is price of oil five year. You can see uh, outside of the first fiasco last year around February, where we spiked it to 125. Uh, it's been falling ever since then. Here's the one-year chart. Uh, again, it's stabilizing. I think it's going to go back up, uh, trading flat currently over the last three months and the last month just choppy. I don't think we go much lower than here. And again, the economy is heating back up. Demand's going back up. Interest rates are falling. So demand and growth is going to come back here. Um, so again, NRG is your way to play that. Gold, we're not in, just watching it. Uh, again, it's a barometer of central banks' trust in uh, owning bonds versus gold, primarily. And you can see they're all hating on bonds and buying up gold. Uh, silver, again, can go parabolic versus gold, not doing that yet. So just some signals we're looking at with gold and silver in terms of what central banks are uh, predicting for inflation and bonds over a long stretch of time. Okay, the housing, or excuse me, the regional banking crisis uh, was a huge issue. That seems to be resolved. And we got KRE, regional bank ETF, uh, bouncing back. So we hit a low of 38 or so, and now it's up to 52. S&P 500 hitting new highs today. NASDAQ hitting new highs today. So again, we think the big catch-up trade for that would be coin, GPTC, ETHE. Russell 2000. Uh, is again, we'd like to see it breaking to new highs. It's really been going nowhere, uh, but getting near that point of reaching a one-year high soon. So that's very, very bullish indicator if this one were to break through too. Consumer spending keeps growing uh, after a negative print in October. 
Uh, it's been back to rising. Uh, bank credit continues to grow. Consumer credit continues to grow. And the balance of trade slowly uh, decreasing, which is, again, going to predict a little less inflation, but no crashing economy in the U.S. We really don't see a recession coming this year. China's PMI is ultra hot at 53. It had gone sub 50 last October. Uh, again, they're waiting for the U.S. economy to cool off so that they could afford to ease policy without crushing their bond and stock uh, currency markets. Chinese imports are on the rise, showing a global economy uh, heating back up and exports, again, also uh, heating back up. So overall, uh, bonds look like they could trade flat or maybe make some gains, uh, but you're going to make most of your money in the inflationary bets, stocks, GBTC, coin. Uh, is where we and, and then NRG. That's where we see the big gains with the current data. Uh, really, the bonds are a good hedge for us in case all this data flips and we go into some sort of deflationary cycle. Okay, so you want to learn more? Call Dean now at 505-322-7515. Here's our disclaimer. I'll go ahead and take questions now. Okay, Bill's asking about GBTC versus other. Uh, so you already paid your fees on GBTC, and I probably will be rotating it into ETHE or coin next week. So I wouldn't do anything today. Um, just wait for the trailer next week. But yeah, the, all of them are going to be very similar, just different fees. And GBTC is a spot, e, spot ETF now. Dennis is asking what is going on with TMF. Yeah, the inflation picked back up a little bit uh, and uh, the freights, the freights shipping costs are going up. So the bond market is predicting we might have inflation pop back up mid next year or mid this year currently based on that chart I showed you. And also we're just issuing so much debt. <laughs> there's just more, there's just massive debt. So the supply versus demand is also not in our favor on that one. Pat saying what makes uh, NG, NRGU? That's if oil goes up, NRGU goes up. Oil would be natural gas. So a lot of the shipping routes for LNG are getting messed up. Uh, but we're playing U.S. prices with oil, not necessarily uh, what's going on in Europe or the Middle East. And that one's a super high risk one. Okay, very good, guys. So look for a trailer next week. Again, we're looking at ETHE, coin, oil, yen as potential uh, small adjustments and maybe a little UVXY, but might wait a few weeks on UVXY. And possibly dump or trim FNGU. Excellent. So thank you so much. Call Dean to learn more if you're catching uh, a teaser of this on YouTube. Again, we don't charge anything up front. We want you to make money, join the webinar, meet everybody, uh, and then upgrade once, uh, once you've seen we're the real deal. So thank you guys so much, and we'll see you back next week.